I don't know. So I'm doing a quick video on a recycled PC. Essentially most of this is built with um, scrap parts, leftover parts, e-waste, whatever. Case was a friend of mine's from his original old gaming PC back in the uh, late 90s. Got a power supply that's 20 years old. Um, logic board came out of a flood damaged machine. Banks and banks of humming machinery. I've never seen so many knobs. Here, try that button over there. No. Check that button over there. So, I originally put this together for my son. Uh, it was his first gaming PC uh, when he was in middle school. And then a friend of mine was looking for a gaming PC for his son when he was in middle school. And so I said, do you want this one? So it's been handed down um, and it's all made of parts that basically cost nothing. So he had a little bit of trouble with it. He's gonna put in some new video cards, uh, a new video card, trying a few different ones and it stopped turning on, uh, which ended up just being the clock battery being dead. So I've temporarily got a, a CR2016 in there. If it's, I just don't have any 2032s. But in doing that, found out we can't run a newer video card in this because the power supply doesn't have the right power connector. So I've got some adapters coming. However, well, this is a dual, suppose a dual rail power supply. Um, I've toned it out with my multimeter and all the 12 volt supply is connected together. So the thermal paste on the processor was really dry and you know the, the heat sink is getting a little dirty. Fans are getting dirty. When I got it turned on, found out this fan was really not um, acting too nicely. It was the bearings are going. So I've got this Catalyst 4500 series fan pack. Uh, I'm gonna steal one of the fans out of this because these are really nice fans. Original machine, I had this video card in here. It's a GeForce 6800. Uh, it ran okay up until we upgraded this to Windows 10 and Windows 10 does not like this video card. So the three that we've got to choose from, this Radeon card, uh, this is a, I don't forget, 4850. Another possibility is a 5770 or an NVIDIA GTX 770. This is the one I'm hoping is going to work, but it also draws 230 amps. So it's make sure that we don't, you know, over overdo it on one of the rails. So I'm going to get to work first taking apart this power supply and uh, having a look inside. I'm gonna clean the case and do all that stuff, sort of stuff too. Basically, give it a tune-up. Show you what I mean about the rails being all connected. Uh, I've got this on continuity, so I'm checking down here. I just pick any other 12 volt, and it's there. Cable over here on the logic board over here. It doesn't matter. Uh, they all tone out, so I'm pretty sure they're all connected to one rail. The joys of a tiny workbench. Actually, I gotta disconnect all the power. This has all disconnected here. Let me get that out of the way. These undone. Actually, I'm just gonna, oh, no, they're zip tied together. This fan, which is going to go away. Pull that connector. All disconnected. Yes. Handy dandy. Screw tray. Completely suck. my tray. I left it on the computer. That's nice and dusty. Oh, and there's two fans in there. I didn't even realize. I don't think that rear fan works. 
nice and dusty in there. All right, I'm gonna get you in closer. Um, I wanna clean this anyhow, so oh, this power supply is working. That capacitor is not working anymore. That's ooze coming out of there. So I'm gonna have to check all the other capacitors in here and see how they're doing. Uh, there's a lot of dust in there, I've gotta clean it out. But come around here, all the 12 volt coming down into this area. It looks like there might be two separate sections, like two here, two here. I'm not sure, um, it's hard to tell. There's some going back behind there, but they all look like they're coming from this spot. So I think I'm gonna have to actually pull the logic board out uh, and look underneath, check the traces and find out what's going on in there. So yeah, more disassembly, which I'm gonna have to do anyhow to get rid of that capacitor and I'm gonna have to clean it up. So I'm sure it'll be really boring watching me clean all this. So I'm gonna clean this all up, get it taken apart and uh, just a little more digging in here. So this one is the 3.3 volt rail. That's your five volt rail. This is a 12 volt rail and it is it's not like dead, but you know, see how that's kind of sunk in a little bit and this one's poking out just a little bit. That one's probably gonna be iffy as well. The problem is I've got this one for the 3.3, which is gonna fit. It's actually a little higher capacity, which is great, cool. Um, I have this one, which could replace that. It'll fit in there. Um, it's higher quality. It's still just a 16 volt cap. Um, just like what's in there right now. But it's not 105 degree Celsius rated, which a higher quality one, it's probably gonna be fine compared to that. Yeah, dual rail my ass. There's all the 12 volts, all together. There's nothing even separated in the logic board. And these are lumpy, lumpy. That's all the grounds. And there's your 12 volt. There is zero separation there at all. So there is, this is not, dual rail. Fun. So shouldn't be any problem with just running it to whatever, but I'm going to split it out onto multiple different wires here. So I'm going to figure out what wires go where, um, and then so I can spread that power load out over several of these little dinky cables. Of course, you can see the upside to having to rewire it. You can make a nice custom length wire. Keep it all nice and neat. So, there you go. New, much better fan installed. And keep going. Still waiting for parts, so. All right, I'll film this. So everyone can critique my thermal paste application abilities. So here's the factory heatsink. Uh, not connected to the fan yet. I did take it out and actually washed it, washed it after vacuuming it. Uh, the reason I do that is because these are definitely built to cost to just barely meet the specs needed for the processor. So if you can, uh, if there's any oils, greases, anything that's stuck on there, it's going to have a slight insulating effect. So it won't uh, be able to dissipate heat quite as well. So just wash it with some, some Dawn and a scrub brush. Got all the goobies out of it. So it's all nice and dry. Connected to the fan. So in order to hook this up, some iso alcohol. It just splattered me in the face. Clean that. Clean our heat sink that again. Make sure there is nothing on there and it is super duper clean. Now I have a brand new bit of thermal paste and need of course decides it does not want to stick to the freshly clean surface. And these are actually pretty thin. Might not look it, but they are thin. All right, fine. I'll do it. So it's right side up. All right. I think I got it now, maybe. All right, 
That's on there. Okay. I want neat wiring, not messy wiring. Now that I did everything wrong for the internet, I'm sure someone will complain. But there you go. Heat sink is back in place. Okay, that's better. So yeah, I had to reverse the wires. I decided to make it backwards. Thanks Cisco for making my wires not look nearly as neat and tidy as they did before. Okay, let's see how long this runs. Trying this again. <laughs> just to see if it's just crashing because something else, but no? Wow. All right, as you can see here, I've got the power supply open. Bunch of junk on here and no sign of a machine. I got those capacitors replaced. Uh, and during all of the testing, unfortunately, this guy let out the magic smoke. It is most definitely not a 500 watt supply. I'm gonna guess it's more like a 250 that could occasionally handle more of about 300 watts, which is all it was really pulling back when it blew up. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. All right there. That resistor went pop and there were fireworks and lovely smelling smoke. Of course, I wasn't filming when it happened, but lovely. So this guy is as good as done. So we're waiting on a replacement supply and uh, we'll take it from there. So I think I'm gonna finish out this video with a dead power supply. I'm gonna make a follow-up video testing all three of the video cards we've got to see if it makes any difference um, to have the fastest card in there or if a slower card is just fine, um, if there's any bottlenecks or anything, I don't know. But I figured I'd test all three to uh, have some content in the next video. We'll see.